Have you seen the footage that the Chicago Police Department released that showed the ambush that peaceful protesters unleashed on officers who were merely protecting a Christopher Columbus statue? The video demonstrates exactly the intent of these so-called protests. We'll discuss how the police aren't the final target in this episode of Activate America, staying active to throw off government tyranny. Chicago Police Department Superintendent David Brown explained during the news conference that peaceful demonstrations have been hijacked by organized mobs. What began as a peaceful protest at Grant Park Friday evening devolved into a very dangerous situation in which mob action deliberately sought to injure officers, provoke retaliation, and damage property. To give you an idea of how highly organized this particular protest was, let's look at some of the footage that the Chicago Police Department released. WGN out of Chicago published it on their YouTube channel. We have a link to the full footage in the description. The crowd is estimated at about 2,000. Watch how the crowd works together. Many protesters shield those intent on breaking the law to hurt police and damage property. They conceal their actions by hiding among the crowd, standing behind trees, hunkering under umbrellas, and have designed their large street banners to be used as cover as well. When they arrive at the statue, the PVC pipe that is being used to hold the banners are pulled out and used as weapons against the police. The police pointed out during the news conference that the lengths of PVC pipe were sharpened on the ends to allow the pipes to be used to poke or stab officers. How is this the action of a peaceful protest? Also notice that the police seem to be completely unprepared. Later on, the superintendent mentions that because of the ambush, he has ordered police attending these protests to now be geared up. We find it interesting that the police would go into such a situation unprepared. Plus, out of all of this, only 12 arrests were made. Will the district attorney be following through? Folks, what we are clearly witnessing is a highly organized group of people intent on disrupting and tearing down the system. The fact these protests turn violent and are happening in many major cities around the globe denotes not accident or happenstance, but a clear agenda and an international organization. However, this idea of riots and subversion is nothing new. Verifying this is Lyman B. Kirkpatrick, who served as Inspector General on the staff of the Director of the CIA. In his June 13, 1961 testimony to a subcommittee to the U.S. Senate Judiciary, he was asked if he feels the CIA is an important facility in the security field and that its services are needed in a cold war as much as in a hot war. He answers, I think it is imperative that the security forces of the free world be kept currently informed of subversive activities anywhere in the world which may affect their countries. I believe also that the public should be alerted whenever it appears they are likely to be the unwitting tools or the victims of a specific campaign of subversion. Leading the line of questioning, Chief Counsel J.G. Sauerwine makes mention of a campaign of subversion. He says, Mr. Kirkpatrick, last year the Internal Security Subcommittee published a staff study rounding up details of recent riots against constituted authority all over the free world, including the United States. Copies of that small pamphlet disappeared like magic indicating, it would seem to me, a deep concern among the American people lest this type of protest should get out of hand. Mr. Kirkpatrick's response? Senators and Mr. Sauerwine, many of us know what is back of the mob violence, which we have been considering. It is probable, however, that few of the demonstrators realize that they are victims of a war that is being waged in the free world today. It is a life and death struggle between communism, which makes people the slaves of the state, and free world democracy in which the state carries out the will of the people. Our police are among the foremost guardians of freedom and thus a major target of the communist. The better the force, 
the greater its efficiency, the higher its competence in preserving the peace, the more vital it is for the communists to destroy it. The International Communist Organization provides a training manual for espionage agents in which their duties are enumerated. This pocket-sized pamphlet was seized in Europe. Later in his remarks, Mr. Kirkpatrick offers some background on the communist war on police. He says, The communist technique has been directed primarily toward discrediting the police in the eyes of the people. On the local level, communist troublemakers would start fights in public places in order to involve the local police. When the police went into action, the troublemakers linked arms in an effort to show that it was the police who were causing the incident. The handbook from which I have been quoting very generously provided graphs or sketches to illustrate this point. Of course, they are designed to facilitate training of communist agitators. The sketches show, in the most elementary fashion, how crowds can succeed in crushing police opposition. Those not familiar with communist techniques will more easily understand by examining the pictures how a few well-trained communist agitators can utilize crowds for their purposes. He then submits no less than 24 of these sketches that offer techniques to achieve the military tactic of envelopment, which has a crowd surrounding the police in order to render them incapable of handling that crowd. It looks as if the communist tactics used to neutralize the police haven't changed all that much. Core groups of agitators use sympathetic protesters as accomplices to help conceal activities leading up to an actual ambush. Mr. Kirkpatrick's next statement is as relevant today as it was in 1961. He stated, The communist press specializes in playing up and discrediting all police action against rioters, strikers, and mobs. The communists have exerted considerable effort to penetrate the police and to sap the morale of the force. Following this pattern, an article was published in a paper of national circulation concentrating on the following themes. That the police were distrusted by the people. That the enlisted personnel of the police were ill-treated. That the officers were incompetent that it was basically a repressive force, that it should be reorganized on regional lines because it did not represent the people. Mr. Kirkpatrick saw what the communists were clearly up to, but will key individuals be observant today? Local officials and police need to wake up to see the situation for what it really is, or America will undoubtedly be outwitted by these communists. That is where you and I come in. We can help them to see this reality by distributing materials that expose this movement. If you haven't done so already, the July 9, 2020 special report on what's really behind the riots from the New American Magazine is an excellent resource to hand out. Please do so as you are able. And we are also recommending assembling a local ad hoc committee of police supporters of JBS members and non-members to help distribute this information at not just this time, but on a continual basis. Links are in the video description. And until next time, this is Bill Hahn for the John Birch Society saying stay active, everyone. Oh.